listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. This is Flavoring Friday. Welcome to the PHNX show. Shout out to OG's Brands, the official sponsor of Flavoring Friday. Head on over to ogsbrands.com to see their full lineup, including their newest gummies, the OG's Naturals, and the big OG's, and to find out where you can purchase all kinds of good stuff. All right, now joined by Jason Shear and his backup. I am Mike Luke. We have got a lot to get to today. Many, many good things, many... Anthony or Anthony Totri will be joining us at about 11.05 to talk about the imminent collapse of ASU athletics, which I will, uh, well, you know, it's, it's not a good look. We will definitely be, uh, we'll be piling on, but I got to give uh, Totri a lot of credit for hopping on there. He's a good guy, but. Arizona, though, we are actually good at sports, and we have a lot of different things that we can talk about. And we're going to talk first about Arizona football. All right, Sheer. The uh, big news that everybody's talking about is that Jay Toya from UCLA has entered the transfer portal. He is a big-time, big-time player, and he's going to cost a lot of money, obviously. Arizona's got a connection with him. His brother played for Brent Brennan at San Jose State. We should get Jay Toya. What say you? Yeah, not going to, but we should. We should. Uh, he's at Texas right now. Okay. Visiting with Big Bill, who's going to commit to Texas this weekend. Wow. I just Hi, think Bill graduate. You did. Uh, I just think that the the price range for a guy like Jay Toya is going to be wild. All right. Yeah. Now his uh, his brother, obviously, if his brother were to enter the portal, would that change anything? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it would help, and I think they would probably lead for the brother. The brother's still practicing. We'll see what happens. Um, now there were some obstacles with him entering the portal the first go around. Maybe he likes the coaching staff. He may not enter it. Timing is kind of a was kind of a big deal with him the first go around. So uh, we'll have to see what happens with that. All right. But we are going to talk about the uh, defensive tackles because Sheer, I was on meltdown about B B BBN. Sheer is doing his thing now where he pretends that somebody isn't good the second they leave That's Arizona. Good. I think Bill Norton's good. I just don't think he's as good as, I mean, you were in tears in the corner. Um, I was not happy about it, to put it mildly. Yeah. But let's talk about the Arizona defensive tackles because there is a lot to like there. First, Isaiah Johnson. Isaiah Johnson, my guy out of Chandler, he has been a real revelation for this coaching staff. He has been splitting back and forth with BBN. And not only has he been splitting back and forth with BBN, he has been uh he's been kind of a he's been kind of a fire hydrant. He's been very the new coaching staff is very, very impressive. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, and they're gonna add guys. There's no doubt about it, but uh, the defensive line has looked pretty solid in practice so far. Uh, Isaiah Johnson finally healthy. That's the, that's been the key with him is staying healthy, and he had to get into a little better shape. Uh, he's done both. Uh, Chuba has been awesome, surprisingly good to be honest. And and they'll add they'll add guys. I'm I, you know they have twenty scholarships or are going to have probably about twenty scholarships. So um, you know we could judge what they have now, but the reality is it's going to look different. Right <laughs> now, uh, next. We need to talk about Chuba. Chuba is massive. Now, I want to ask you this. Do you think that Chuba is going to be better than BBN? Uh, yeah, I think they'll probably be about the same. Okay. I wouldn't surprise me if he's better. All right. I, don't okay. think Bill, I, look, I think Bill Norton is good. I don't think he's nearly as good as you are making him out to be. The defense changed when big Bill Norton went into the lineup last year. Come on, it like, did. The defense changed when, when, I mean, you could go down the line. The defense changed when Manu got better. The defense changed when they when Price Hawk and Dicario Davis approved. The defense changed when Gunnar Maldonado decided he was one of the best safeties in the conference. BBN was a big part of it, Jason Shear. Stop. There he was, was good. nobody he was else like BBN on the line. Uh there was, but that's Who? okay. Uh, you think BBN was the best defensive lineman Arizona had? Interior lineman, yeah. Interior lineman? Well, you also think Jacob Kangaika is like awesome. We are going to talk Jacob Kangaika. You are going to lose that. You are going to lose that one. Jacob Kangaika is really, good. Gunnar Maldonado really. did become good, though. I have to give a lot of credit to Gunnar Maldonado. My bad, Gunnar Maldonado. Although, listen, I get people all the time that are like, oh, my bad, Gunnar Maldonado. Yes, everybody thought Gunnar Maldonado sucked. There was not one person, not one fan that was saying that Gunnar Maldonado was good, including you, Jason Shear. Oh, no, I love Gunnar. Oh, come on, care. dude. I was Gunner for life. I, I named one of my dogs Gunner. Oh, come on. Cut the crap. Okay, now, 
What? That's that's all crap. That's not true. I'm looking at PF. You want me to look at PFF and tell you who the best interior lineman was? I don't care about PFF, dude. PFF. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I know you do care. Well, I'm just going to prove your point. Then you care, right? PFF, no, I don't like PFF. PFF. If it is, proves your point, would you care? Yeah, no. PFF is oh. literally like the spacing and the per 48 folks. Arizona's best interior lineman was Bill Norton, but you don't care. So Take that. And Tia Savea was. No, no, you don't care. You don't care. No, take that. You went to your store you and slapped in the face. You just said you don't care. No, by, okay, so you got to get – hey, this is very good. AZ Wildcat fan, this is very, very good, very funny. Maldonado gives the defense great spacing. We are going to get to the spacing here in a, in a little bit. All right, but I would take – I would like to get one of the Toya brothers. I would be okay with either one. Beggars cannot be choosers. We are not beggars, but we are choosers. Now, Damian Martinez. I have mixed opinions on Damian Martinez. He's really, really good. I get it. But let me ask you this. What do you do with Quanley, Cros uh, Crosby, Merritt, and Fam? The uh, I need 10. I, I don't care who they bring in. I don't care if they bring in Walter Payton. There has to be 10 touches per game for Fam, period. Even if they brought in Walter Payton? Even if they brought in Walter Payton. I need 10 touches for Fam. slow, Walter Payton. Needs yeah, fans. I know. This uh, is yeah, I wouldn't worry about Speedy. I would probably worry about Jacory and Jordan Washington and Brandon Johnson. Uh, the the big reason is like I uh, yesterday was probably the first time I saw uh, Damian Martinez up close. I, he is significantly bigger than I thought he was. Well, he's awesome. I've no, I've no doubt I mean, about he that. Is, and and they don't have a power back on the roster. Uh, Conley's not a power back, and neither is Jacory. I think that Arizona is willing to lose one of those guys. Now, it likes Speedy. I don't think it wants to lose Speedy. We can't lose Speedy. Lost, we agree on this. Yes, but I think if it lost one of the others and brought in Damien, it's it's worth it, Mike. Like, the dude is literally the best player in the portal. Uh, is he better than BBN? He's literally the best player in the portal. All right. I fine, fine, fine. He would uh, all right. Adam Prim. By the way, you need to follow Prim on Twitter. He's one of my favorite Twitter followers. Even if I disagree with him here, what touches is he taken from a speed back and fam? So let me ask you this. I like how my priority is that fam will not be uh, fam will not be isolated from this. So if you have you still think we can get 10 carries per or 10 touches per game from fam yes. if Damian Martinez comes here. Yes. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm in. I'm in. But again, I've seen this. I've seen this song and dance before. I do not like it worries me a little bit. Now, I would assume that either Conley or uh, Conley or uh, Cro or uh, uh, Merritt Crosby probably probably uh, ends up bouncing at that point. Right. Someone I, I would. I don't want to. I don't like speculating on who, but there's no way that Arizona would return all the running backs if Martinez can. Do you think that, uh, well, hmm, yeah, I would, I would tend to agree with that. Now, do you think, well, man, I really want to make fun of ASU, but uh, we were, we were going to, we were going to hold off on that for a, uh, hold off on that for a few minutes. Now, here's the question. Where does the money then come from for Damian Martinez? Because he can get paid a lot of money. If you're the number one player in the portal outside of BBN, then you're probably going to get a lot of money. So, um, Damian Martinez has been on record the last few days saying that the money thing is overblown. He just basically wanted to go to a bigger school than Oregon State where he could prove that he's the number one back and all that. And people remember, like, people forget Oregon State's not in a conference anymore. So guys yeah, like I mean, Damian Martinez. I mean, like, look at their I, – I, I know you follow this closely, Mike, but they've lost, like, everyone on their women's basketball team, which was good because they don't want to play, you know. Right. Whatever. So – um I will say this, Arizona, and, and don't ask me amount. I don't know the amount, to be honest. But uh, it has had, from what I've been told, the coaching staff, remember, I think I was on earlier this week or last week saying the coaching staff was aggressively raising money. There's been a very nice influx of cash over the last two weeks to the point where Arizona believes that financially it can compete with Jed, who's trying to steal every player and land guys like Damian Martinez. By the way, Jed Fish, we are keeping an eye on you. So far, so good, my friend. And I will laugh if Jed Fish loses a player that comes back to Arizona. No more hints other than that. No more hints. You don't get anything, uh, anything other than that. But that would be very, very funny. Okay, now, 
Uh, let's see, Wendell Moy. This was a scurrilous rumor put out by Jason Shear. Do you want to address this, Jason Shear? Uh, before, since you said it was a rumor, technically, when I said Dylan Anderson was, tra I thought about this last night. You yelled at me for saying Dylan Anderson was going to transfer, and I know it was last year, but technically, I was right. No, you were right. No, you were full of crap. He redshirted and then he transferred. It's no, the you lost that one. Take the big bad for Shear. Uh, there's smoke around a few players. All I said is there's smoke. Someone took that on like Facebook or something and said that I said he was gone. I never said yeah, he was gone. Yeah, ASU fans that keep quoting you and saying that you said he's gone. Yeah, never said that whatsoever. I said there's smoke around his name. Washington's all over him. And Arizona's doing everything it can to keep him. That's all I said. Uh, he is one of them. There's a few others. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, Wendell Moy is, is participating in practice. He's been participating in the off the field. He's been in all the team meetings. Arizona is not going down without a fight. Now, the problem is that this is still has, what is it, eight more days, yeah. 10 more days, and it's going to be a journey every day, but Arizona's fighting. All right. People out there, it's not Keona Wilhite. He is at Nebraska. I will not tell you anything more, anything more, and maybe it you know what I found also yesterday? Because you, we, we we know now it's Wendell Moy. Dude, I love I – mean, that's going to be my next point. It gets better. It's not Joe Borjon. What? What is it's it? It's Joe Borjon. <laughs> I swear. Well, that means that even like – even the GOAT was calling in the wrong name then. Yeah, it's Wendell Moy. That was oh, correct. I know the Wendell Moy. By the way, one of my favorite things to do now is to correct people when they say Wendell Mo. I was yeah. talking with the uh, Brogan the other night and I told he kept calling him Mo and I said it is Wendell Moy. Get that clear. Got to give uh, got to give a lot of credit to a Wendell Moy. Also, also sheer Circle K. Circle, you know, Circle K. I went to Circle K earlier today and I got gas. I was also in, I went to the casino a while back and I was on like Kenny and Aho and I went to Circle K as well. The Circle K's everywhere are fantastic. A hodgepodge of humanity at every Circle K. And all of these people are part of the inner circle. Just like you, Jason Shear. This is true. Look, I heard a rumor. This is just a rumor. Damon Martinez is on the fence. Saw the amount of Circle K's around the university. And Arizona's right in this thing. It's a huge deal. Dude, it's a massive deal. And if yeah. he was part of the inner circle. Now, join the inner circle for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit circlek.com for details and the BetMGM Sportsbook app. I want to bet against ASU and Washington this year. There's only one place to do it. The BetMGM Sportsbook app. All right. Sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10. You will receive $1,500 of bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane with the disclaimer. Bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369. New York. Call 1-800-327-5050. Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF. Iowa. 1-800-981-0023. Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right. Now. Let's get back to a little bit of Arizona football. So, all right. Oh, we got to talk Joe Borge on for a second because Tim Portland. Joe Borjohn. Joe, Joe Borjohn. After he gone, we figured out how to spell it. Joe, Joe Borjohn. Now. Joe Borjohn. I don't know. It's just not Borjohn. All right. Oh, Joe Borjohn. First of all, there was an ASU guy that was uh, tell, or tweeting at me yesterday. Very, very funny ASU people where he said that uh, he said, well, all your best players left to Washington. And I saw that you just lost it. Uh, you just lost another big time offensive lineman. So I asked him, I said, who is the offensive lineman? And he says, don't act like you don't know. He was talking about Borjohn. Yeah, I hope. You know what? Look, I think Washington has to be aggressive here. They Don't have you to think go they play. have to get him? Yeah, they got to be aggressive. They need to prioritize him. UW down bad with Lyman. Go get my my boy Joey B. You've got to get – now, where do you – now, where do we think – now, listen, I will say this. That was one of the worst offensive tackle performances I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of really bad crap at the U of A. I have lived through a lot. But uh, Joe Borhone, we wish you nothing but well, nothing but the best at Washington, hopefully. Washington. We are going to try to get I Joe. very hard to get in the portal. They might be the most expensive position right now. Do you think we could convince Jed to take him? Well, considering that uh, we we mispronounced two offensive linemen's names. And one of them was actually good. 
because the offensive line coach did not know their names. Hey, remember when I went in there? Got the pronunciation from. I think we can convince Brendan Carroll to take him. Remember when I went in there and I literally told Jeff Bo that they were they were uh, they are uh, uh, their guide was mispronouncing Key and Burnett's name. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's every now and then. Generally, I'm stupid. I don't know anything. But every now and then, I get something. And when I find it, when I'm right about something, I become incredibly stubborn because there's not many times that I am right about something. So I will beat it down. I told the uh, U of A SID that it was Key and Burnett, not Ke- uh, not uh, 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 Keon Burnett. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. They texted him and he said, yeah, it's Kean. Mike Luke doing something for humanity, just like the Desert Financial Credit Union. That's what uh, that's what we're about at this stage. Okay, so back to uh, back to Arizona though. I'm actually the more I look at the defensive line, I am actually okay with the defensive line. But you need to add players. I'd love. I need another defensive end. Wink, wink. But I also need. I also need more depth at the tackle. I really need Toya to enter from San Jose state. I need him to enter because that would make me feel a lot better right now. You got three guys and let's be honest here. They're all kind of unproven. Mike, are you, are you tampering? No, I'm not tampering. I'm just saying what I would do. What Everyone I would else do. is tampering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're allowed to speculate. We're in the yeah. media, dude. We're not. Yeah, coaching. that'd be great. Uh, they need a lineman. They need to your lineman. There's a few that I would, I would keep an eye on. Do you want some names? I can give you some names. If you want give me some names, give me some names, feed them to me. All right, let me let me pull up my list. I got a I got a little list here. Feed them to me. Feed me rhymes or feed me beats. Oh, look at you, uh, lineman, lineman. The kid from USC that just came went in. I Bear Alexander, we'll take him. No, <laughs> Stan Tofu, whatever Tofu. I'll take uh, him. Billy Walton. Don't know who he is, but he sounds like Big Bill Norton. I'll take him. Defensive end from Texas that Arizona recruited a little bit. Uh, there's a guy from, from Memphis that, that, that they want, you know, there's guys, these guys, don't you worry. Here's the question though. Who can we get that can replace the culture fit? That was big bill Norton because big bill Norton, that was such a good point. That was a culture culture fit. fit. What does that mean? By the way, you want to know something funny? Arizona's recruiting guy on Twitter. Someone pointed this on the board. He's following Jaden Rashada. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. You think Rashada would come in and back up Noah for a few years? I don't want – well, we're going to talk about that. Again, Totri is hopping on at 11.05. Uh, so, again, all right, let's talk about flow at defensive end. Joseph, and by the way, Joseph, Oracle and Grant takes no prisoners. They take no – Oracle and Grant is the one, especially with that little smoke shop. Now – um, I thought you were going to say smoke show. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Flo, can we put him at defensive end? <laughs> the crack addict smoke show. Uh, no, stop asking me that. He I get asked every day. He's not big enough. I mean, he's he's. Look, it, the coaching staff. This coaching staff is doing everything it can to make Justin Flo a good football player. Seriously, right. everything it can. Right. So if it can't make Flo a good football player, it's just not going to happen. Oh, by the way, Brad Rich says uh, Chuba is a good. Chuba is a culture. Yeah, he fit. is. That's a good he's way a great, of putting it. Yes, he is a great culture fit. That's a really, really good. Uh, it's a really good way of putting it. Now, I would love for the my bad flow movement. Uh, I would love for it if we can get the my bad flow movement going. Then we will allow this to all flow uphill, and we wow. are very, very happy about all of this. But so far, so good. Now, shows every every day. Yes, absolutely. Now, Rashado. Again, we're gonna make fun of ASU. This has been really hard. When Totri messaged me, um, first of all. I, he tried flaking at first and said, I can't come on. And I was like, oh, all right, whatever. And then he said that uh, he messaged back and he said, yo, wait, I can come on. So Totri will be coming in here. And uh, that is good. Now, we uh, I got to talk basketball here for about five minutes. And then we are going to get back to football. I've been beat up a lot on Twitter, deservedly so, for not talking enough football. We are going to talk a lot of football. You have my word, my guarantee. my, pr- my Your secret is my promise or my whatever. All right. I don't think that makes any sense. All right. Dylan Mitchell from the University of Texas. Now, he is uh, one of the better players in the transfer portal, uber athletic kid, one of the best athletes, a defender, but people will not like him because he is not a space the floor guy, Jason Shear. I like well, Dylan Mitchell. I prefer yeah. Dylan Townsend, but if Arizona wants Dylan Mitchell, I want Dylan Mitchell. Wait, you prefer him over Townsend? No, 
Oh, I just said I prefer town. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I, a couple things. Uh, they are not that far on Dylan Mitchell at all. Uh, it is in the infant stages. Uh, Townsend is the priority and will be the priority until he indicates he's not coming to Arizona, which it could happen next week. I actually think he'll probably decide next week when he's done with the visits. It's interesting. Mitchell is a zero on offense. He does nothing on offense. He's not skilled. Uh, his scoring is because he stands around the basket and gets it off boards or dunks off passes. He will not shoot. Townsend is better offensively. Uh, I'm not a big Mitchell guy at all. Uh, you know I'm actually not that high on Townsend either. But when you compare the two, I'm taking Townsend every day. Mitchell defensively, though, Jason Shear, yes. very, very good. Very- Mitchell, it's it's real simple, right? Like, what do you think Arizona needs? The problem is, or it's not really a problem, is if Caleb Love doesn't come back, hmm. I think you need a guy like Townsend, right? Because you're losing a significant amount of offense. If Caleb Love comes back, I think it's easier to make a case for a guy like Mitchell. He is absolutely better defensively than Townsend. He is absolutely worse offensively. Word on the street is uh, is Arkansas is the early leader in the clubhouse. For uh, Dylan Mitchell? Yeah. Oh, playing for John Calipari. But either way, I did tell you, I also got called out on your board for a vicious, heinous lie that was not true. When they said that I was trying to rely on cabbies, first of all, it was the wrong person they were calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it was not. I messaged Shear this no, two days. I messaged Shear this two days earlier, and I said Arizona is recruiting Dylan Mitchell. But again, people will not like Dylan Mitchell because he is not a space the floor folk or whatever. By the way, I I have a very very good take, and I posted this on your board, and I am going to I'm going to run with this. I thought that this was a very good point by me, and it's for the spacing the crowd folks. Let me find this here. This is very good radio, and we have Toe Tree. Uh, lined up. He will be joining us in a second. He's getting his hair fixed at the moment. But uh, let's see here. First, 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 I got to find this. Hold on. This is a good point by me, and I'm going to quote good points by me all the time. But uh, now, where is this? Hmm. Okay. All right. Here's where I'm at on shooters, and this is going to be where I am at when it comes to shooting. All right. Now, this is in response to a, a person on the board. And I said, you mentioned that earlier. All too often, opposing teams packed in the paint daring Arizona to shoot. So was it just an off night for Arizona against Clemson? Because a similar shooting prowess abandoned Arizona in previous early NCAA tournaments. The Clemson game would have been a total outlier if this Arizona team was actually a good shooting team. Boswell was a 40% shooter, scared to shoot. Keyshawn was a 38% three-point shooter left open for a reason. Pella was the only 43% shooter in history who would miss an open three, gather an offensive rebound tap, tap back, and pass up another wide open three. That made me very flat. I don't care what those players' percentages were. None of those dudes shooting led to consistent spacing come second half of early NCAA tournament games. The three-point percentage fits in neatly into a checked box on paper, but never really mattered for spacing. These are college players, not pros, and that's why the game is still so different than the NBA. You leave almost any perimeter dude on a good NBA team open, and you're likely going to get burned one way or the other. If you are going to get a good shooter in college, you have to get an actual shooter. It doesn't need to be Salim Stoudemire, but it needs to be a player that lives to shoot and can consistently make it from distance. And again, yes, shooting is fantastic to have. Nobody disputes that. And yes, there is a clear, nice mix to have. But Arizona's shooting has abandoned itself early in all of Lloyd's tournament losses. So if the decision, the decision right now is between a 6'8 athlete who can shoot four threes per game at 38% against a dude who can drop 31 and 13 on NC State or 17 and 11 on Kentucky, no matter the efficiency while recreating his own offense for others, I'm taking the dude who can create his own offense. Even with the most packed in of zones, Jaden Bradley single-handedly lived in the paint and kept Arizona in the game. There's multiple reasons why Arizona's teams have, or Lloyd's teams have struggled come March, but the Wildcats have lost early because of too many creases and not enough Bradleys. Boom! How about that? That was good. That's the most you've ever written on a post or a tweet in your entire life. That was good, but it was actually really good, though. Yeah, it was All good. Right. But we want Trey Townsend, though, because he can get his. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, now. There. All right, there's the... Uh, there's, there's yeah, the- bye. Proud of you. That was a good thing. No, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Where is it? AZ Wildcat fan. No, it's not choking. And it's not choking. These guys weren't actually really good shooters. That's what I kept bringing out. They had good percentages, but 
uh, Kylan was scared to shoot. Pella Larson was not looking to shoot open threes, and Keyshawn was left open for a reason. They were not; these were not real shooters. That is what I am talking about. Okay, now, without further ado, we are going to bring in the man, the legend, uh, Anthony, the legend, Anthony Totry. <laughs> Hello, Anthony Totry. How are you doing, my good friend? I'm fantastic, guys. How are you? How's the hair real quick? Just want to make sure we're, we're all set. We're looks, all good looks here? Looks good. Looks good. What perfect, do you say? Perfect. It looks just like Shears right now. It looks fantastic. That's what I was going for. That's what I was going for today. All right. Before we get started here, can we play the Totry back the A clip oh, to just show that Totry does back the A? Hold on. Back the A. Back the A. Welcome into the PHNX Sun Devil Show. You guys play that how often? <laughs> oh, we, we like this one a great deal, Totri. It's good. All right. Sheer and I are going to go back and forth asking some questions here, but where should we start? Oh, let's talk about the sanctions that came down today. Herm Edwards. This guy is a fraud of epic proportions. How he is on ESPN now and still allowed to give his insight and talk about character and all of this. This guy is full of it. He's full of crap. And he set ASU back a long way, Anthony Totri. He absolutely did. And, and I think, again, the, the sanctions and the penalties um, that everybody sees today for Arizona State, there's nothing, I think, in those that Arizona State fans should be wildly surprised about. Um, I think you had a pretty good understanding that Arizona State and the new regime and Kenny Dillingham last year were going to kind of lean into suffering uh, those consequences as early as they possibly could. You look at the 2023 uh, bull ban, the self-imposed bull ban, Obviously, it looks good now based off of what that team accomplished. I think now it's more so just like it's almost the end, right? Almost the end. You still got the recruiting violations um, or I guess the the penalties that Arizona State is going to be suffering. Specifically, you look over the summer, there's going to be several weeks that Arizona State is not going to be able to, to really be in contact or hold visits with players, which is going to suck. Um, but thankfully, it, it looks like Arizona State can finally put this entire saga behind them but it, it certainly sucks and it's just a another reminder that here we are friday april 19th and we're still having to talk about herm edwards it's beautiful i'm okay with it <laughs> of course you are mike <laughs> with the with the the violations and all with the the recruiting sanctions are those like major like arizona couldn't go on the road for like months at a time yeah Is so they in the same boat from, from my understanding, it has to do in terms of contact specifically, so texting, calling, and then also having those players on campus. I'm not 100% sure if that does impact the the coach's ability to go out there um, on the road and recruit some of these guys. I imagine that that is probably um, something that Arizona State and these coaches probably will have to suffer with. But again, it is just, uh, I believe, August 1st, the the – violations in that type of stuff will be over Arizona state getting time served um, for those, those four years of probation. Did you think that, uh, let me ask you this. Do you th did anybody really understand like the gravity of how crappy the Herm Edwards era was going to be when he was let go? Because it feels like it just keeps getting worse and worse. And I keep seeing him on my TV, which makes me laugh even more. I, I, I think people were just so frustrated at the time um, that there, there was maybe a, a lack of like just how dirty that regime was in terms of violations. I, I know there were, there were some people that saw the four years of probation and all that type of stuff, and they were just like, that feels like Arizona State maybe got hit a little too hard. Uh, but Chris Cartman, he 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 put out there this morning, kind of just relating and equating. Arizona State's violations to that of like Michigan or some other schools. Right. Those schools have to do with about a half dozen recruits. Um, Arizona State was upwards of of twenty that they you know mishandled and, and mismanaged during a time when you know during COVID that that, that should have not been happening. I got to give them this go credit. A lot of those players that left ASU, they turned out to be really good. Jitty yeah, Dan, it, it's Jitty it Daniel. just goes to show Arizona State cheated and had a ton of players, and they were what eight and five with it, like. <laughs> Now, should we embrace the cheat? Now, a couple people are asking. Here's the thing: Should we em embrace the cheating? Um, because again, everybody's cheating now, Toby. 
Everybody's wow. cheating it's now. Good. Everybody has been cheating. It's wow. just Arizona State got caught. That that's the situation. College football, college sports in general. Uh, you you know, Mike. It's for for such a long period of time. Everybody wants to talk about NIL and the transfer portal specifically. NIL has been happening for for decades now under the table. Um, now it's just people can talk about it, people know about it, and it's really out there a little bit more. In terms of Arizona State cheating with the the recruiting violations and that type of thing, what makes it so much worse in my mind is that, again, it was happening during such a just crazy time period in the world, right, with, with the pandemic. Um, and, and Arizona State and Herm Edwards, whether it was purposeful, um, like it, it was certainly just a, a, a bad look for the university, for the regime. And there's people that are like, oh, well, you know, it, part of it's Ray's fault, part of it's Herm's fault. It, it's it's both their fault. There, there's equal blame here um, for that, just the, the dumb and dumber for Arizona. So you got Harry Dunn and Lloyd Christmas, essentially. Yeah. All right, here's my question. Do you think, joking aside, that there was a little bit of mole work from Antonio Pierce from all this? Because he really did a good job of torpedoing the program. Sure, you agree. And- See, he didn't he didn't do the interviews. So they can't give him the show cause or whatever because he's 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 not cooperating. Yeah, there are two individuals um that still are, I guess, in disagreement um and, and not fully accepting the violations. And uh yes, Antonio Pierce is one of those individuals that is not accepting um kind of the, the repercussions of the actions, which again he was the recruiting coordinator at the time. Um so it is certainly interesting to to see that and then it's it, it's never going to go away we're, we're on what year three of this and and you've got two individuals that are just like no we're not ready for this to be over with yet yet antonio pierce is the head coach of the las vegas raiders um so it's it's a lot of fun here in tempe of the gift that keeps giving toe tree by the way you need to you need to quote tweet sheer more often and troll him that was very very funny a couple <laughs> weeks ago that made hey, it me was laugh. great for engagement man it was great for engagement out of my door <laughs> you gotta do it toe tree more of this toe tree more of this but we gotta ask you this now you came on here and you made headlines throughout the world actually just in tucson throughout the world it's what i do yeah that's what you do you said, Jaden Rashada, you would rather have him than Noah Fafita long term. Now, obviously, Jaden Rashada is moving on. Would you still rather have Jaden Rashada long term than Noah Fafita as a college uh, football fan? Uh, yeah, I, I am 100% going to stand on that. I think Jaden Rashada, again, uh, the same the same thing that I said the first go around. Jaden Rashada has the intangibles to be a better quarterback. You mean the tangibles because the intangibles are the mental part. The tangibles are the throwing. You could teach that, though. You could teach that. I can't teach a kid arm strength. I can't teach a kid size. I can't teach a kid to throw the ball as far and as fast and as strong as Jaden Rashada can. Um, Now, I think Noah Fafita is certainly a, a better college quarterback as it stands right now, April 19th. Um, But Things can change. I don't think, and I said it yesterday on the show, uh, the the breaking news pod that we did. I don't think Jaden Rashada is transferring with the the idea that he is going to start immediately. I know there's a lot of reports that Georgia is, is where he is projected to go. Um, when you miss an entire spring, it, the the impact that it's going to have on how soon you play is is pretty drastic. Also, considering Jaden Rashada just really got acclimated to to throwing this spring, hasn't even participated. Um, in all of the drills. So I would imagine he's transferring. He's going to go get a bag wherever he goes. Um, and the intention is probably that 2025 is going to be his year. And for Arizona State, w- w- with Sam Levitt on the team, you also bring in a guy like Tolufson, the class of 2025 quarterback. Jaden Rashada kind of saw the writing on the wall that there was going to be competition throughout the time um, he was here at Arizona State. So you're saying that he's running from the competition at ASU to get to Georgia? Whether it be Georgia or wherever else. Um, it's, he's certainly going to make money. He's certainly going to get an upgrade, um, in his NIL status and what he was getting at Arizona state. All right. Coach, I'm giving you another, one more opportunity, (laughs) one more opportunity here. Who would you, so you would rather have in a vacuum, you would rather have Jaden Rashada for the next three years as your college football quarterback. than Noah Noah Fafita. Fafita. This is Totri. I'm giving you another opportunity. Let us let you down solid. Not the NFL in college. Just college. Come on, Totri. I get three years. I get three years. Are the, are we same roster? Like same are, are roster, we saying, same roster? The only want? thing that is changing is the quarterback. 
Yes. Yes. I'll take Jade Rashad. Oh, <laughs> Poetry, come on, man. We're <laughs> trying to help you he's here. Guts, Mike. He sticks Noah to his is a good is better right now. He is better right now. Things change. Things change. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Fine. <laughs> let's let's talk. We, now there is a player on the roster that I would like to have. Oh, here we go. Can you get a, <laughs> how can you get us Elijah Badger? Help us help you. What can we do? Um, that's a hot rumor. Come on, it's, it's Tree. Help you us know, help you. Come on. That that quarter billion dollars that was misplaced. If you slide that to us, then I think we can make you the deal. Oh, all I think right. that's look. I don't. I don't think Elijah Badger is going anywhere. Um. Uh, I, I've been in pre- I've been pretty that? adamant. I know there's I know there's individuals that that um, think that Elijah Badger is, is headed out to the portal, and I will absolutely raise my hand. And, and if that happens, um, I, I will say that I'm wrong. Uh, but I, I genuinely don't believe Elijah Badger is going anywhere for for multiple reasons. Um, he had the opportunity to leave already. There was you know money on the table elsewhere that he could have gone to, um, and, and he opted to stay at Arizona State. So, do you want uh, a Waffle think, House bet on this that he doesn't finish his career at ASU? Say that one more time. A Waffle House bet, maybe a tw- of the twenty-four <laughs> no, hour. I'm, I'm I'm done betting Waffle House. I'm all good on the waffles there. Okay, now I want to get I want to stick up for uh, Bobby Hurley here in a second. Oh here. Lord, no, this is good. This is good. Sheer and I are both going to stick up for Bobby yeah. Hurley. We're team but first, let's talk Jacob Kungaika. I okay. told Jason Sheer because here's what Sheer does. Whenever a player leaves the U of A, Sheer immediately says he sucks and that he wasn't well, good. I think was that good at Arizona, too. I never said he was awesome at Arizona. How has Kengaika been so far for you? He's looked good. He's looked good. But I, I will say the, the interior part of the Arizona State defensive line group isn't very isn't very deep. The defensive line in general is, is kind of an unproven group, but specifically on the interior, Arizona State's like cream of the crop is CJ fight. Who was a freshman last year, played high school ball in Texas. He figures to be the starting interior defensive tackle for Arizona state. I would be shocked if Jacob Kungaika is not the second man um, right behind CJ, probably a starting caliber defensive lineman. The coaches talked before spring ball even started. They love the energy. He brings the juice in the meetings and in the workouts and all that type of stuff. He's brought it on the field as well. Um, and I think there is a little bit of a, a, a fire to, to that, right? There were probably a lot of Arizona fans, um, that didn't like his departure, specifically the fact that he opted to go to the in-state rival, um, Arizona State. I know there were situations with some of the coaches at Arizona. Uh, but but again, I, I think Kangaika fits the personality of this staff really, really well. Um, I'm interested to see, though, how it translates uh, uh, on Saturdays, obviously. All right. Now I will tell you. Oh, we got a super snap from to or a super snap for Toe Tree, by the way. A bag of chips from Toe Tree. Toe Tree, you help yourself to that Thanks, bag Brad. of chips. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, what Brad. Me- I appreciate you. Here's what I need you to ask. Uh, I need you to ask Kungaika, though. Did you know that his mother, serious? I'm, I'm not kidding around. His mother is still part of the Back the A movement. Really? Yes. She still likes Back the A stuff. She just recently removed the Back the A background. You need to ask him if his mother still backs the A. Will you do this? I, I'll ask him. I'll ask him specifically for you. That's all I ask. All right. Now we are going to stick up for Bobby Hurley and Dillingham here for a second and look at the real perpetrator of this. Wilner had an article or was it Wilner Shear or who was it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was Wilner. Yeah, Wilner. All right. Basically, it, basically it was this is that ASU gets absolutely no support from the administration. The coaches get no support. The, uh, the finances are in the dumpster. Where uh, and Bobby Hurley is Bobby Hurley and uh, Dilly are actually good dudes. Now I hope they lose every game, but they're actually good dudes. But they, why would any coach? Serious, serious question. Why would any coach want to go there when you are having this uphill battle? You guys call us the poverty school. We at least finance athletics. No, that's fair. That's a, that's a fair question. I think again, I know Bobby Hurley wants to win here. He likes the challenge of of trying to win at Arizona State. Now, Kenny Dillingham, on the flip side of that, this was his dream job. Quite literally, grew up around Arizona State, grew up in the Valley, grew up a Sunnival fan, Cardinal fan, et cetera. Like, this is where he wants to be, so that explains why he's here. Now, you're right. Michael Crow, for for some time, ha- hasn't really hid the fact that he doesn't support 
um, the athletic program the way that some of these other university presidents do. Uh, and it's definitely hindered Arizona State in, in the, the NIL era, and it's only going to continue to hurt him as long as he he just kind of bypasses the the necessary funding for as uh, fans, athletics. So as Arizona fans, can we conti- can we go? Uh, you know, Michael Crow, he should probably stick around for quite a while. Why doesn't uh, I think well, I think we all agree with this? You agree with this year? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Michael Crow. I think hey, he, gets, a, he gets a bum rap. Hey, you, <laughs> you want to know something about how much we're worried about uh, uh, getting somebody like Michael Crow is a row was a rallying cry for Sheer and I when we were talking about yeah. keeping Bobby Robbins, who absolutely should have been fired for like five different things. But our we are terrified of we see the example up north that you have to deal with. And we are terrified of that. We do not want players like that, or we do not want ADs like that, or presidents like that, uh, Anthony Totry. I think, I, you know, I saw something out there that that said maybe the Arizona Board of Regents should just have Michael Crow be a, a joint president for <laughs> Arizona State and Arizona. I think I, I would welcome that idea. I, I think let Michael Crow run the show here and in Tucson. Um, I think that would just be beautiful. You guys agree? You love him so much. You know, we, we, we could share him. What do you say, Sheer? You imagine if he won out and got what he wanted and ran both <laughs> Arizona schools. Oh, not good. By the way, Totri, I'm going to check something here. I saw this at the gym. These two kids were asking. Uh, they were talking about rappers that I grew up listening to at the gym because I see this uh, shirt that you have. Yeah. So, and I asked them about these two rapper or the shirt they were wearing. They didn't know who they were. Let me ask you this: Who are these people, Totri? Uh oh. Hold on. I mean that's Snoop and Pac, baby. Come on. All right, good, good, good. Because one, because I was Come on, wearing, I asked, I uh, this guy was wearing a Death Row shirt, and I asked him, I said, "Who's your favorite Death Row artist?" And he said, "Suge Knight." <laughs> Get it? It's like no. Oh, Come on, is he kidding? <laughs> yeah, it was it. Is it vast? Pac vast. and Snoop. My my dad when I, I remember being a being a kid, and my dad would would take me and all my friends to to school in the morning, and he was just the entire the entire like hour long drive. To high school, it was just it was Pac, Dude, I, Snoop, I know, Biggie. I know every Tupac song by heart. Seriously, the other day Aurora got in the car and I let her control the music. First song, hit him up. Right, love it. The Absolutely lyrics. love it. Watch it. I keep my hand on the gun because they got me on the run. Now I'm back in the courtroom <laughs> waiting on the outcome. Free Tupac is all that's on my homie's mind, but at the same time, I'm trying to get mine. That was very, very, very. Show is off the rail now, man. Yeah, that is good. Okay, Totri, what time are you? Uh, what time are you uh, guys doing all your uh, doing all your dirty work here? We got we we will be live at noon to have the the conversation that we've been waiting since 2021 to have. Um, so definitely, if you're an Arizona fan, we welcome the trolls, man. We welcome the trolls. Whether you guys are there on purpose or by accident, we'll see you there at noon. Check them out again, Totri. Again, I got to give Totri a lot of credit here. There are many people that run. Uh, after their takes, Anthony Totri was my first call. And Anthony Totri, you showed up like a man. Anthony Totri, you're a beast. We appreciate you. Salute. Love y'all. Have a good one, guys. All right. TTFN, ta ta for now. <laughs> All right. Now, man, I will say this here. This is, I give those guys a lot of credit. That is a tough, tough beat to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, for sure. like, I, it's funny because I, I, oh, Totri standing on business. Um, are, but, like my whole thing is this, and I was talking with him a while back. Like, I don't even know how what I would do to necessarily market it because you've got a how do you rally the troops when the administration doesn't care about sports? You just you, you talk about coaches that care, right? Like, you know, at the end of the day, kind of like what Tochi said, you know, Dillingham cares, right? Right. And so you're like, look, you got to support the program because this dude cares about the program, and that's kind of how you do it. It's not easy. But that's the direction you got to go in. Yeah, it's really. <laughs> this is great, Joseph. <laughs> this is great. Shane hides behind the Bet MGM disclaimer. <laughs> oh, gosh. I know that makes me laugh a lot. All right. But, anyways, back to Arizona football. Well, ASU is going in drastically different directions. Let's talk about some of those takes. I don't understand why Totri keeps saying that uh, Jaden Rashada has better intangibles. No, he has better tangibles, not intangibles. Uh, yeah, intangibles is like intelligence and stuff yeah. like that. Like he has better on, you're betting on the fact that his brain uh, will catch up to his arm strength and all that. 
and I just don't see it, man. Like I said, but I did also do like the thing about going to uh, – uh, you're running away from competition at ASU to go to Georgia. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, exactly. Good. Now, what else have I not read? What have I not read? All right, let's see here. Uh, oh, OGs. OGs. Sheer, you can never sleep. It shows. You need to have some OGs. Yes, every day. All right. Yes, exactly. Show it again. Check it out. Oh, geez. All kinds of good stuff. Now, where is this? Uh, L-M-N-O-P. I'm trying to do my uh, oh, geez. All right. Now, here's the thing. Ben White, our good friend Ben White, an invaluable part here. He is going to the uh, – Ben White is a big fan of the fruits and the creams, and he's talked about it many times before. But to learn more about OG's gummies and where you can find them, head on over to ogsbrands.com. Must be 21 years up. Enjoy responsibly. All right. So I've got Bet MGM, Flavoring Friday, Circle K. I believe I've got everything outside of the PHNX reads. All right. Let's talk about uh, Elijah Badger for a second. Now, all right. You've sold me that we want Damian Martinez. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I'll take it. I'll take it. But the wide receiver one to me is totally easy because then we can have, we get Elijah Badger in here and you can actually move around five or six players. I would like to. Uh, I would 1,000% like to have Elijah Badger. He is actually good. Mike, I don't speculate on players not in the portal. But if you were to. But if I were to speculate on players not in the portal, Elijah Badger would be Arizona's second best receiver immediately. Wait a second. No way. Wait a second. Better than Montana? He would be Arizona's second best leading wide receiver immediately. And he's worked with Bobby Wade before. Just saying. Now, if I were to speculate, I don't like to speculate. Let me ask you this, though. Do you think if Jed Fish was given the choice last year bet between Elijah Badger and Montana Lamonius Craig, which one would he uh, which one would he have taken? Montana. I think. Yeah, Montana. I love okay. it. I love. Uh, what's his name? Jed Fish. What's Sorry, his name? Frank I got news, Mike. I'm always just breaking news. What are you breaking now? This one's not that big. This is a GA. Arizona's hired a GA uh, from San Jose State, Dakaria Monroe. You should know him well. Remember Dakaria Monroe? Dakaria Monroe. Oh, was that the was that that shooting guard that you made me follow no. around for like? That was Dakari Allen. Oh gosh, was that? It was good. Experience. It was good. By the way, that is your best spacing argument. He was a freak defensively, defensive player of the year, right? but couldn't shoot or score worth a lick. He played 20, I'm looking up his stats right now, 30 minutes and averaged eight points, four rebounds, and two assists a game. So when I first started working for Shear, Shear had this huge hard-on for Dakari Allen and Josh Gershon. You guys were obsessed with this guy. You were always trying to well, make no, him out. Mike, you follow who the coaches follow. He sucked. Now you don't do that anymore. He sucked. He wasn't good. He was good. He, he was, was very good defensively, player. and you hope that his offensive game came Every around. Every time I watched play. him, I was like, dude, this guy's playing in an AAU game, and he's scoring three points. Defensive player of the year. Oh, oh no, no, no. We will not. He oh, Desert, Desert Financial Credit Union. Again, actually, I referenced them earlier, but that was called a free. That was called a free reference. But Desert Financial Credit Union. Jason Shear, are you with Desert Financial Credit Union? Yes, whenever I win the Arizona lottery, I always call them first. As you, as you should. Open the uh, segment, however. Uh, oh, hold on. Sorry. Uh, Desert Financial Credit Union. Now, let's see. Where is this? Oh, there it is. When you open a free checking account online, get $200 in bonuses. Get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200 today. Again, it's uh, these people are for the people, by the people. Join a credit union that is committed to giving back to the community and sharing success with the members. All right. We got a golf thing coming up, Jacob Franklin. Let's uh, let's uh, put this up here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is very, Jake very, is very spicy in the side chat. You yeah, he is. Yeah, I just said that I suck. Um, yeah. All right. Now, Eric, look at this. Oh. Look at this. You could be part of this. This is the, uh, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. All kinds of good stuff. Check this out. It'll be on the uh, PHNX website. You could be in one of these nifty carts. That is how cool it is. Look at Saul handling thing, handing things out. Oh, look at this. Look at Sean, dude, with that big shot. All right. Oh, and they're going to be shooting tow tree fatheads. It sounds like as well. So this might be something to uh, this might be something to check out. Keep it one hundred golf classic. May tenth scramble at the Dobson Ranch Golf Club. 
All right. Everybody out there, we've done very, very good work for a Friday. We've talked about defensive tackles. We've talked about Dylan Mitchell. We've made fun of the spacing per 48 folks. We've also made fun of ASU the way that they should be. Now, Jacob Franklin, do you want to hop in here real quick? What do you need? Oh, wow. All right, Jacob Franklin. I just wanted to see if you would. Okay, you're dismissed. So, anyways. All right. All right, Sheer, where can they find you doing your stuff? Wildcatauthority.com, Wildcat Scoop Podcast with Shelby, at Jason Shear on Twitter, and we have ordered the DNA test. You did? We have ordered the DNA test. It'll How be much here was it? 85 bucks. Oh, so you're going to find, dude, there's not going to be any pug in there. Guarantee you there's pug. It's going to be like 40% pug. Oh, you're not going to, there's not going to be literally any oh, No, no, look, 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 look. No, I don't want to see this. You keep <laughs> showing this. That is not proof look, of anything. Look, look. <laughs> That is not proof of anything. It is a dis- it is a Basenji. It is a Basenji. That is no, what we're going to go. Had with. A all you right. You had a Basenji, remember? I have had a I've had a Basenji as well. So, all right. On that note, we're signing off here. All kinds of really, really good stuff. We appreciate all of you. Anthony Totry, a man who never uh, Anthony Totry is like William Wallace, where he is never ducking a fade, as the kids would say. Wow, look at you. Very hip. Dude, yeah, dude, Crenshaw and Slauson in the house. All right. <laughs> On that note, though, for Jason, oh, where, where can they find you again? Wildcat Scoop Podcast, wildcatauthority.com, 50% off sale. Uh, sign up now. Do it now. Erica, do it now. Sign up. Get everyone to sign up. All right. Back the A. We'll be back with you. Back the J. We'll be back with you on Monday. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats Podcast. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 